Hey there everyone, and welcome back to Not Another Arcane Devlog. Feels weird doing something apart from just devlogs all the time. Anyway, so since this is a question I do get asked quite a bit, I figured I'd just make it into a video explaining why I decided to stop using Unreal Engine and create my own. But yeah, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Thomas Randall, and I've been creating a game called Arcane for about three years ish now at least i think that's what my github history says and for the most part of that development time i've been using something called the unreal engine to get it from something in my head to um game yes <laughs> i wouldn't really call it a game in that state because uh, there's no gameplay loops it's more of just a weird pixel art running simulator so yeah the reason I've been able to do that is because I've had a game engine with all its existing tools and whatnot to bring about all the systems that were in that half-baked prototype from its initial fruition all the way up until what I had it at it's only until recently that I have decided to scrap practically all my progress and start from the ground up in the confines of my own engine. Now, I know what you're thinking. Whoa, now your game look bad. Unreal Engine look way better, haha. Uh -huh. You dumb fuck. First things first, I'm nowhere near the same level of game completeness in this new engine, and that's why it looks like absolute trash at the moment. But secondly, I'm in no way arguing that Unreal Engine is bad, and you shouldn't use it. it has its pros, has its cons, just like making your own engine does. And it's just my particular scenario that the pros manage to outweigh the cons. And yeah, that's it. Video done. Bye. Funny joke, but no one's done that before. Now, but before we get into the meat of things, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about it. Woo. So, why did I decide to stop using the Unreal Engine? Well, there were a few pretty good reasons, each carrying their own weight in the final decision. But at the end of the day, I want to make the best game possible. I don't want to cut any corners on gameplay systems, and I want it to run as smoothly as possible performance-wise. And I'm sure that's what everyone's tries for when creating games. If you're not giving it your all, then... Uh... What are you doing? <laughs> now that's not to say that if you're using somebody else's engine or framework that creating a great game is impossible. That could not be further from the truth. But certain aspects of programming within a handmade engine can speed the development process along quite a bit, especially in the problem solving department. When making a game, you're inevitably going to hit a roadblock. You're gonna run into some sort of problem that you're not gonna know how to solve whatsoever. You'll just be sitting there going, Huh. Maybe it's some sort of limitation within the framework that won't let you solve your problem with the current tools at your disposal. And that's where you sort of run into issues with using somebody else's framework or engine, especially if it's not open source. So, what do you do? Avoid the limitation, find some sort of less efficient workaround, or do you alter the core of the engine itself and just get rid of that limitation somehow? If it's not too inefficient of a workaround, it's not that big of a deal, it doesn't affect performance or gameplay in any way, then that's probably the way to go. But if that isn't the case and you just cannot find some workaround somehow, then you're gonna have to make some changes to the engine that you're working within. And this has happened to me a couple of times. You're missing a piece of the puzzle and you need to create that missing piece. Weird analogy, but let's just roll with it. <laughs> Now, if you do go down that route, it can prove quite difficult when you're working under someone else's framework, especially when you don't understand the inner workings of the framework, leaving you to spend just hours upon hours trying to decipher it and know where to make the right changes. And this is all assuming that the source code can be altered in the first place. Luckily, Unreal Engine is open source, so you can actually go in, make the changes you need, Hopefully it might fix your issue. But nine times out of 10, when I was doing that, I would just end up giving up. <laughs> and that's probably just due to my lack of experience programming wise, so this might not apply to everyone. But yeah, what I would end up doing is just hack together some workaround, often at the expense of quality in some shape or form. Yeah, I lacked the experience and understanding of the engine I was working within. And as a result, the quality of the game began to suffer. So yeah, that's not exactly something that I wanted to basically ship a game with knowing that I could somehow fix those issues. Now, this issue doesn't exist if you're the one who's actually written the engine. If a feature, tool, system is just non-existent, make it exist. <laughs> now, speaking of tool sets, you're probably also making a very specific game, a game that'll come with its own very specific problems. Game engines, they can't predict what tools you do and don't need for making your game. So they'll try and create as many as possible so you encounter as little limitations as possible. But then even if you don't encounter any limitations and everything's just going completely fine, everything's all dandy, as unlikely as that is, at the end of everything, you're probably gonna not use every single system and tool that 
that the engine has to offer. Now, because of the complexity of all these systems, pilot times are gonna be horrible. Unreal Engine, especially, I would just go and grab a cup of tea every single time I had to compile because it just, it, it, it took hours. <laughs> I'm definitely over-exaggerating that, but they are pretty long and pretty abysmal. So yeah, you're gonna have these really long compile times leaving you with nothing but overhead to show for it. Unreal Engine is absolutely massive. And for my purposes, I just don't need massive. It would be the equivalent of driving a nail in with a sledgehammer. I could still probably do it, but probably not the most optimal thing out there. Unreal Engine also has been made with three-dimensional games in mind. Sure, it has 2D features as well, but if you're just making a 2D game, like I am in my case, then why have 3D features and systems compiled along with it? That's just more code, more compilation that is going to go unused. Now, don't get me wrong, using a game engine like Unreal or Unity can be a great way to get a game up and running quickly. If what you really want to do is just get stuck into game development and produce a game as quickly as possible, then all the tools and existing API uh, provided by a game engine, it, it can be invaluable. Personally, I'm not all that concerned with time, so I'm not trying to rush out a game as quickly as possible to market just to get a quick buck. I want to make the best game I can. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning, and I just want to learn as much as possible from the experience. So putting aside all the technical benefits of switching to a custom built engine, I think another big drill for me is that feeling of complete ownership that I'm after. And also knowing that at any point in the development process, I can just look back on the whole thing and know exactly how and why everything works. That is pretty cool. So um, yeah, there's nothing like it. Now, even combined with all of those factors, I think that ultimately the decision was pushed over the edge by my desire to learn. What really drives me is just learning. Learning something new, learning new skills and just putting them to use in any way, shape or form. When I'm learning something new and just improving upon my knowledge, that's when I'm at my happiest. And I think it goes without saying that there is a lot of learning that goes into creating your own game engine especially if you've got very minimal programming experience and you have just came from a game engine where you've spent most of your time visual scripting your way through. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so each new system that I implement in the engine, it's its own challenge. Most of the time it can prove pretty difficult and frustrating. Other times it's an absolute breeze, which happens very rarely, but um, it is good when it does happen. <laughs> but bit by bit, the problem gets chipped away at and I've learned something new. I've got another cog turning away in my engine. That for me at least is my favorite part of this whole little endeavor. It's just building a tool and then using the tool in a practical sense. It's just so much fun. Because <laughs> there's nothing better in life than just learning something new. Seeing yourself progress towards some self-defined goal off in the distance. Progress is addicting, what can I say? Now, I know that all that to some of you is probably gonna sound pretty ingenuine because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, but that is exactly the reason that I wanted them on board in the first place. Their entire platform is just something I can wholeheartedly get behind. Whether it be through cinematography, programming, editing, I'm just always looking at ways I can improve upon my craft. And I'm sure you're the same. If you're looking at getting into a new hobby or learning a life skill of some sort, then I find that one of the best ways to do that is to take an online course. It's actually how I got started in learning Unreal Engine and C++, so uh, full circle there. <laughs> and yeah, it was a key component of me getting started in this whole adventure, so yeah. If you're wanting to go down that path, then there are tons and tons of courses over at Skillshare. From photography to programming and anywhere in between, odds are whatever you want to learn, that will have it. So head on over to the link down in the description or enter in what's currently on screen at the moment and you'll get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. After that, it's a very affordable $10 per month on a annual subscription and you'll have access to all of the courses that your creative heart desires. Anyway, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. I've now got a new Discord server, so if you want to come have a chat, then the link for that is down below. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments or come hit me up on Discord and I'll uh, try my best to answer them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I'll uh, catch you next time.